Hello, my name is Paul Marchbanks, and this is Digging in the Dirt, with the fourth entry in a series on the films of Lars von Trier. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the film Europa from 1991. It's nearly impossible these days to avoid clickbait, those attention-getting, often very divisive claims about a topic or person which unfortunately grow in power and influence the further they migrate away from nuanced, complex discussion. Something within us wants a two-dimensional other we can feel comfortable bashing. And if others take aim too, well, we don't need to feel personally responsible for participating in character assassination. Lars von Trier is such an easy target. He's been a provocateur from the very beginning of his career, and his recent work has tackled some of the most disturbing elements of human depravity. Do his films parade before us some of humanity's worst behavior to entertain us, to disturb us, or to stretch us? I incline towards the latter possibility, though I know it's a hard sell when so many of us have trained ourselves quite rightly, to be sensitive to and intolerant of injustice in every form. I'd like to argue that Von Trier wants us to be outraged at much of what he presents on screen, wants us to look at ourselves and our world more closely so that we're in a better position to change a few things. Sometimes, however, his films are downright palatable, thematically and visually, yet still managed to attract hate because of provocative claims he's made during interviews. Let's consider his third feature film, Europa, and the many sensitive, tops, uh, sensitive topics that it addresses. Like Fischer, the anti-hero of Von Trier's The Element of Crime, German expatriate Leopold Kessler also proceeds under a misguided idealism propped up by gross self-confidence. Unlike Fisher's devotion to a dangerous theory, this hero's fatal error lies in his nervous inability to choose between competing courses of action after having returned from America to help with German reconstruction following World War II. In Europa, von Trier considers whether a principle that the Apostle Paul applies to dietary decisions and holiday celebrations might apply to other moral dilemmas as well. Paul's letter to the church at Rome asserts that in matters such as whether to eat meat or not, either alternative is righteous when, quote, one is fully convinced in their own mind. In Europa, and later Breaking the Waves, Von Trier explores a plasticity quite different from his parents' moral relativism, a flexibility potentially supported by Jesus' claim in Matthew 5, verses 21-28, that the content of our hearts and heads matters at least as much as our more measurable, memorable actions. The priest, who appears in Europa, against a backdrop of guerrilla warfare between German nationalists and puppet administrators set up by the American military, is cut from a different ecclesiastical cloth than his blasphemous predecessor in von Trier's second film, Epidemic. When asked whether war clarifies moral questions, the holy man holds that God is, quote, on everyone's side, that he supports anyone who seeks him in prayer as long as they truly believe in their cause. The priest claims that God forgives bloodshed that results from fighting, quote, for a cause with all your heart, but condemns those who refuse to commit to a side. Quote from Revelation, Because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. This quote, this passage from the book of Revelation, which details the Apostle John's vision of the final judgment, helps anticipate a smaller scale but equally final judgment, one leveled at Leo in the film's close. According to his wife, the ill-fated Leo is, quote, the only criminal involved in the ongoing guerrilla war because he vacillates, refusing to firmly support one side or the other. Though Von Trier's tale shows us the complexities behind both sides of the conflict, the film implicitly censures Leo's unwillingness to choose between the two, suggesting that his endless oscillation ultimately disqualifies him as an active moral agent. 
One of von Trier's earliest, most consistent targets is the humanist, convinced of our species' intrinsic goodness, the idealist who believes that, quote, people will take the trouble to cooperate and work for the good of their fellow man, end quote. Though von Trier sympathizes with this optimism, he thinks it deeply naive to believe the human race can fix itself. His skepticism makes clear why Fisher, in the element of crime, ultimately perpetrates instead of mitigating wrongdoing, why a doctor, an epidemic, inadvertently spreads the very disease he attempts to treat, and why the fickle Leo in Europa ends up causing a new catastrophe instead of assuaging the pain of an already traumatized people. Von Trier's cynicism also helps explain the failure of those well-meaning but overly confident family members and chance acquaintances who try to alleviate someone else's depression in Antichrist, Melancholia, and Nymphomaniac. In these later three films, efforts to address hopelessness by way of cold, hard reason merely expose the shallowness of the meddler's own mindset. Whenever Von Trier implicates the faults of humanists and would-be counselors, he draws on his own experience as the son of two dialectical materialists and his own long years in therapy. His efforts to dramatize the failings of historically disenfranchised groups, however, bring him into terrain he has not tread himself, and frequently irritate social justice advocates more concerned with redressing measurable wrongs than with identifying victims' own failings. It's one thing to allow your character, Osborne of the element of crime, to assert that, quote, the morality of the police is no different from that of society, when the audience likely agrees that, yes, law enforcement officials, quote, run the risk of being corrupted, just like everyone else. It's quite another thing, however, to create a feminist, the unnamed woman of Antichrist, whose research into genocide convinces her that women are just as inherently evil as men, or to note in an interview that oppressed Jews, quote, have their bad sides as well, just like other people. Such conclusions may be true, everyone is fallible, but uttering this aloud may complicate attention to the injustices each group has suffered, potentially weakening efforts to redress wrongs done against them. Such sound bites feed those inclined to label von Trier a misogynist or anti-Semite, accusations he has been navigating ever since his graduation film in 1982. In a move that offended his mother and other members of the Danish resistance during World War II, images of a relief, alternately translated as liberation pictures, adopts a sympathetic posture towards a gentle, bird-loving Nazi soldier whose Danish girlfriend betrays and violently blinds him. That Von Trier grew up in a culturally Jewish, albeit atheistic, household and had even cast himself as a Jew in Europa mattered little to the news hounds who jumped at his infamous words about Hitler in 2011. During the Cannes Film Festival's press conference for Melancholia, Von Trier claimed that he was, quote, really a Nazi, you know, because my family was German, and followed up with the claim to, quote, understand Hitler, to be able to imagine him sitting in his bunker in the end right before he committed suicide and sympathize with him a little bit. Ever the mischief maker, Von Trier knew his words would evoke a reaction from those unwilling to chew on his provocation, but certainly did not anticipate being banned from the Cannes Film Festival for seven years. Pinning Von Trier down and branding him is easy. When we allow our lust for outrage to trump our appetite for complex truth about another person, I'd like to suggest that Von Trier is more interested in stimulating thought about hard topics than in fomenting hatred. His most vehement critics appear to have overlooked what he said about the Axis powers in the preceding decades. In the video documentary Transformers, released in 1997, Von Trier's deeply rooted interest in morality emerges starkly against the backdrop of Hitler's Germany. Quote, It's fascinating. How can you... How can, how could they imagine exterminating the Jews as they did? How could it be accepted by a people who basically knew about it? How could it happen? 
what sort of mechanisms can get a people to behave as they did? It's all so fascinating. It's the closest we have had, or the closest we have, to true, you could say, evil, isn't it? Genuine evil, end quote. As we shall see later, the films Dogville and Breaking the Waves make it clear that humanity's inclination towards evil and the attendant difficulty of embracing deep good are what interest von Trier above all else. As he elaborates in 2018, quote, it's very important that Hitler is humanized because this idea that we can simply throw the case aside and say Hitler, he was evil, yes, but he was also a human being. And that's important to know because what he contains or what he did can happen again. I'd love to hear what you think about von Trier's representation of both Jews and German nationalists in the film Europa.